this week on the new Leadership Normal, stop escalating. Heads up, we're talking about something very subtle in this video. There's a difference between strategically enlisting executive influence and being a whiny tattletale punk who can't get things accomplished. I have this conversation all the time, and it goes like this. What will happen if something doesn't happen? Someone doesn't deliver or participate? I ask people at the director or vice president level, and they usually respond with, I'll escalate. What does this mean? Often, this is actually documented in a process. If X doesn't happen, then escalate. You talk to your boss, right? I spend a great deal of time on this topic. Do you spend quality time with your boss? If you do, what should you talk about? Related to the topic at hand, you should be discussing together how to get things done and how to influence results. You may in fact enlist the support of your boss and maybe another executive, but this is a tactic that's part of a bigger plan. Your boss is involved in your stuff because you've been talking about your stuff openly. As a result, your boss is a resource and can suggest solutions to problems. When a barrier arises, it's part of the process and not a surprise. You even anticipate these barriers. The key here, you are involved in the solution. You haven't simply abdicated responsibility. You aren't giving up and dumping the problem in someone's lap. Let's talk about risk tolerance. No one wants to look bad or be misinterpreted, and the best leaders do in fact focus on how they're perceived. Of course, there is a balance here, but I really do feel sorry for those people who say they always tell the truth and don't care what people think. Please let me know what your thoughts are on this issue in the comments. This process of default escalation is mega risk avoidance. If it's institutionalized and turned into a habit, it says something very powerful about your culture. It says that leaders throughout the organization aren't trusted and that the only solution is power exhibited from above to get people to act. It also says that we're all about eliminating risk and only higher ranking people are capable of managing that. The key here, your escalation policy tells a story. How do you start turning around this disturbing negative indicator? First, start trusting yourself. Take responsibility. You have much more capability than you think. You're getting into the art of leadership. It's a bit uncomfortable, but step up. Talk to your boss. Strategize. Seek advice rather than marching orders. Put your boss in a position to help you. It's not a pass-fail test. It's create value. It's okay to do it together. And get to know your organization. In the example I gave earlier, if I let the operations manager know what we're doing and what's important and we don't get what we need, I can ask for assistance and work with them as an equal rather than a subordinate dumping a problem on their desk in an adversarial way. Promote de-escalation. Help your teams with this. You can help, but in a way that empowers people to work through problems. How does this subtlety play out in your organization? Please share in the comments of the associated blog post. Thanks for joining me. If you missed us last time, click the video to your right for Alignment's Secret Ingredient, Congruency. Will I see you Saturday morning? Each Saturday, our special email conversation focuses on you as a leader with a message you won't see anywhere else. Click the link on the top right of your screen or visit jimcanarucci.com. Please join us for more next week on the new Leadership Normal.